Okay, hi everybody and welcome to the next in this series of screencasts on programming for psychology and vision science. So in this screencast we're going to look at the concept of temporal um, structure and temporal dynamics. So what we want to do in this uh, screencast is for you to be able to use clocks to track the time um, as we execute our programs. We want you to have a bit of an understanding of how um, monitors uh, show uh, visual stimuli and this concept of a refresh rate and what implications this might have for how we draw uh, stimuli that need to be dynamic. And finally, we should be able to structure our code so that we can draw uh, moving stimuli and still be able to collect responses. Okay, so in previous les lessons, um, we've usually only considered situations in which the stimuli is static. And there's a, a simple uh, time course to the uh, code where we usually just wait for um, the participant or the user to, to press a key to finish the program. However, in vision science experiments, um, we often want to show uh, moving or um, uh, some sort of dynamic stimuli. And we want to show them with a, a kind of a complex um, and um, structured presentation schedule. So to do that, we first need to think about how we can handle time in Python and in PsychoPy. So if we go to uh, Spider, as usual. So a, a key way in PsychoPy that we um, are able to track um, time is by a clock. So this is some functionality that's in a, a sub-package of PsychoPy. It's called core. So first we need to do if we want to use these clocks is to import psychopi.core. So now the way that we create a clock is by defining a variable called clock, which is from psychopi.core and a clock like that. So the key thing about a, the, this clock data type is that it has a, a get time function that tells us how many seconds have elapsed since the clock was created. So as, fun, as soon as this statement on line number four here gets executed, this clock will be created and its time will be set to zero. But then as the program continues on, this clock will um, keep track of the time in seconds since that um, time the, the clock was created. So we're just gonna show that in a, in a simple, simple way by, we're just going to do two iterations through a loop. So we're just going to loop through twice. Now we're going to use another function in this core subpackage called wait. And what wait does is just essentially does exactly what it says. It just pauses the program's execution for a given amount of time. So we're going to pause it for one, one second. And what we're going to do is see how this affects our time. So we're going to print what our clock is telling us the current time is. All right, so let's save it and run this. All right, so you can see no output here. We've got printed out one and two. So let's work through what's happened here. So we've imported the PsychoPy core. On line four, we've created a clock. Now we're, when we create this clock, its internal timer gets set to zero. Now we're going through this loop here, so through the first iteration, we're asking PsychoPy to wait for one second, then we're going to print out what the time is. So you can see here, we've waited for a second, and now we're printing out the current time, which is one second. Then we go back and start the loop again, we ask it to wait for another second, and print out the time. And now you can see that our time has gone up to two seconds. So you can see how over the course of your um, program's um, execution, by using this clock and get time, you can know um, something about the, um, the, the time that um, you are at at the, at the present moment. Okay, so we can use a clock as a, as a simple way of presenting a stimulus for a particular duration. So say if we wanna show a grating for 500 milliseconds. So the first thing we need to do is, as usual, set ourselves up for drawing a grating by importing the necessary packages and we'll open a window as usual. All right, so 
So now, yep, we want to have this clock defined. We'll make some text. And we'll make a grating. So we've got our grading now. Okay, we're going to start by just setting our text to something informative. So we'll say, press any key to show the grating. We'll draw it and we'll flip our window. Okay, so we don't need this from the last example. Okay, so let's look at where we're at so far. I'm going to open a window, I'm going to make a clock, make some text, make a grating set the text to show some informative message, um, draw the text, flip the window so it's showing the text. Now we're going to wait for the user to press a key. Okay, so now the, the user said, all right, show me this grating. Now, as we said, we want to only show the grating for 500 milliseconds. So one way you can do that is we can use the uh, these clock variable we've defined as a function called reset. And this sets the clock's timer back to zero. So remember when we first defined it, it was set to zero. But as we've execu been executing these commands, these have taken some time. So now by the time we get to here, the clock won't be at zero. It'll be at, um, I don't know, half a second or something like that. So by resetting it, we're saying, all right, go back to zero and we'll, we can then use this, this clock. So what we're gonna do is we want to draw this grading for 500 milliseconds, so we can do use a while loop, so while clock.get time is less than 0 0.5 because remember clock.get time is going to return um, a value in seconds since um, the, the initial, initialization or the last reset command. Now we want to draw the grating and flip the window. Okay, so let's just walk through this. So now we've got this while loop so it's going to execute everything under this while loop as long as this conditional here can, remains to be true. So reset is going to be 0. Is 0 less than 0.5? Yep. So we'll draw it, come back up. Next time it'll if the um, timer will have advanced slightly. Let's say for argument's sake it's 0.1. So is 0.1 less than 0.5? Yep. So we draw it again and at some point after 500 milliseconds, clock.get time is no longer going to be less than 0.5, so we'll, we'll finish up and exit out of this loop. So what we'll do is just update our text to be something sensible, like press any key to finish, then we'll draw it, we'll update our window, we'll wait for the user to press a key again, and we'll finish up by closing the window. Okay, so let's. this is our example where we're drawing a grading for a limited amount of time, here 500 milliseconds, using a, a clock. All right, so let's save it and run it. All right, so now it's waiting for me to press a key. When I press a key, it's going to launch this while loop to draw the grading for 500 milliseconds. Let's see, okay. So see how it only um, showed the grading for a limited amount of time. So this is the, the usefulness of, a, of this uh, clock data type. And we'll just press a key to finish it up. Okay, so this is a bit of an aside, but this method of using a clock is fine for experiments where we don't need very precise timing. So part of the reason why we can get um, uncertainties in our timing is due to the way that our uh, monitor um, updates what we're seeing. So one way we can think about this is to consider this while loop. So how often do you think the grading is going to be drawn? So remember, it's just going to keep looping through this. So the question is, well, how, how frequently do we, are we actually able to update and draw this grading? So this is typically limited by a factor of your um, display. So this is the refresh rate. 
So you might have heard a, a monitor has a, has a refresh rate, which specifies how often it updates. So this is usually measured in, in hertz, um, and 60 hertz is a sort of a, a common, common refresh rate. So let's just have a look at what the refresh rate of, of our um, computer is by asking Psychopy to record what um, the time intervals in between each flip command. So let's, let's keep what we've got here because we're going to come back to it and we'll just save this one and we'll call it temporal 2. Okay, so now what we can do this is to create our window as usual Okay, so now we're going to set a, a boolean uh, variable of win called um, record frame intervals. So we're going to set that to true. Then we're going to draw five frames. Each time, all we're going to do is just flip the window. Now, because we've set this uh, variable record frame intervals to be true, we're asking PsychoPy each time you flip a window take a timestamp of when that actually happened. Now we can access that by, if we print win.frameintervals, that'll tell us each of these timestamps. So what we're going to be look, looking at here is if we're trying to update as fast as possible, what's the actual precise um, time that that happens? So let's save that and run it. Alright, so you can see here in the output, it's printed these uh, frame intervals. And you can see that each one is about um, 0 0.016, and that corresponds to a refresh rate of uh, 60 Hz. So this is how often we're um, able to update our, our window. So if we're, if we're confident that we know this um, refresh rate, this update interval, and we can't really know this without some specialized testing, but if we do know this, then we can, rather than using a clock, we can present our stimuli for a given number of flips, also known as a given number of frames. So for example, if we know that our monitor updates um, the screen at 60 frames per second, and we want to draw a grading for 500 milliseconds, then we can draw um, 30 frames. So let's uh, modify our example here, so we don't, we'll get rid of the the clocks, so we don't need a clock anymore because we're going to do it based entirely on frames. So we don't need a clock. So the key thing is before when we were using this while loop, so we were keeping on going while the time was less than 500 milliseconds. Instead, we're going to replace this. Uh, let's just comment it out so you can see the difference. So we're going to replace it with a, a for loop, so for frame in range 30. Okay. So this should have exactly the same effect. So in, because we know that the monitor is updating at 60 hertz, so 60 times per second, by saying, draw me 30 frames, that's equivalent to saying, well, draw the grading for 500 milliseconds. So let's run this and just confirm that that is the case. So remember, when we press a key, it's going to show the grading for 500 milliseconds. Yep, all right. Okay, so now that we know a little bit about timing and about clocks, let's use them to draw a stimulus that's moving. So what we want to do is draw a grating so that its phase changes so that it goes through two complete cycles in one second. So we can do this in our code. So let's start by, we're going to need NumPy here, so let's import NumPy as NP. We're going to need a clock, so let's import psychopy.core. Okay, we can keep our window. We don't need our text anymore. We can keep our grading. We don't need to do this section. We don't need our text. Okay. So, what we want to do is define our clock. Okay. 
Now let's get a, get rid of this tr previous drawing loop. So now what we're going to do is start by creating what I'm going to call a um, a flag or an indicator variable. So I'm going to call it keep going equals true. Because what we're going to be doing is changing the phase of this grading um, continually until the user tells us to stop. So we're going to use this variable keep going as a way of keeping track of whether the user has decided to, to finish the program. So in our loop, we're going to loop while keep going. So as long as keep going is set to a value of true, we're going to keep evaluating everything inside this loop. Okay, so the first thing we need to do is to set set the phase. So remember, it's grading.phase equals. So now we need to think about, well, how can we um, update our, our phase according to what we wanted? So remember, we wanted to update our phase so that it went through two complete cycles in one second. So if you recall, the way we specify phase is as a value between 0 and 1. So let's start by thinking about, well, instead of going through um, two cycles per second, just imagine that we want to go through one cycle per second. Essentially, that's the same as if we were to divide the current time in seconds by one. So if you think about it, as you, by the time we've gone through one second, we want the phase to be set to one. So what we could do is we could do clock.getTime. So this will give us a time in seconds divided by one will give us our phase if we wanted to go at one, one cycle per second. So now one of the tricky things happens is that um, if you remember this phase has to be between zero and one. Now if you think about it as soon as these, um, the timer goes beyond one second then this value is going to be greater than one. So what we need to do is sort of wrap it back around and we can use this do this using a, a function called mod and we mod it with one. So essentially what this is saying is um, divide uh, this value in here by one and return the remainder. So this has, has that effect. Okay, so this is set up for if we wanted to do one um, cycle per second, but remember that we wanted to go through two complete cycles per second. So another way to think about that is that we want to go through one complete cycle in half a second. So we can implement that by dividing our current time by 0.5. Okay, so we've set our phase. We need to draw the updated grading. Flip our window. Okay, get rid of that. So now let's think about what would happen here. So we've got our variable keep going is set to true. We've entered a loop that'll keep going as long as this is true. Now we've, we're setting our phase, which is depending on the current time, and then we're drawing it, and then we're flipping. So if we were to run this at the moment, it would essentially run infinitely because we've, it's not possible for keep going to become false. So what we need to do is add some way that the user can make keep going become false. So I'm going to do this by checking whether there is um, the user has currently pressed a key. And we can do this by using the function getKeys. So remember in the past we've usually used wait keys. So wait keys will sit there for as long as it takes until you press a key. In contrast, this function getKeys gives you the current state of the keyboard. So if um, the user isn't currently pressing a key, that's fine, it'll check, it'll return, and this will be, be empty. So let's check that. So what we can do is use this function len, which tells us the number of items. So keys is a list. So if len keys is greater than zero, so essentially what we're saying here is if the user has pressed a key, then let's set keep going to be false. So if you can Imagine what's going on here. So it's, it's drawn, it's flipped. Is the user pressing a key? If they are, set this to false. When we come back up, this is no longer true. So we're gonna exit out and finish up. Okay, so let's save it and run this. 
Okay, so you can see we've got our moving grating here. So this sensation of, of motion is because we're smoothly changing the phase of the grating over time. So to make this even clearer, what we can do is just print the current phase to the screen, to the output window. So this will produce lots and lots of output, but what we'll be able to see is this gradual pro progression in the phase based on the, the time. So let's have a quick look at this. All right, so you can see we've got um, these phase values where it's gradually increasing. So let's see, so in consecutive flips, we've gone from 0.25 to 0.29 to 0.32, 0.35 and so on. And let's see if we can go, yep, so this is the operation of that mod. Um, so after we've gone above one, it wraps back around and comes back down to close to zero. Okay, so besides these moving stimuli, a really important um, aspect of, of temporal dynamics is being able to control the trial uh, schedule of a, of a given trial and experiment. So for example, we might want to start a trial with 500 milliseconds of no stimulus, then show a stimulus for 500 milliseconds, then wait for a participant to respond. And we also want there to be two second, a minimum of two seconds in between trials. So let's look at how we can do that in code. Okay, so let's start by, by getting rid of um, this phase example. And let's start from here. Okay, so the first thing we need to do is set a few variables. So firstly, let's set the number of trials. So for this exam example, let's just have two trials. Um, let's also define a pre-duration in seconds, 1.5. So remember, we want to have 500 milliseconds uh, at the beginning where we're not showing the stimulus. Now let's define the stim duration in seconds. will again be 0.5. And let's define this minimum inter-trial interval to be 2 seconds. Okay, so let's loop over trials. So for trial in range and trials. So we're going to execute this twice because we've... Um, set and trials to be two. So let's reset our clock. So now we can interpret the timer on the clock to be the time since the beginning of this particular trial. All right, so now we're at the start of the trial, we want to wait for this um, 500 milliseconds. Let's do this in a while loop. So while the current time is less than this pre-duration in seconds. Let's just flip the window. Okay, so we haven't drawn anything, so it's just going to be a blank screen. Okay, so that's going to continue as long as the timer is less than 500 milliseconds. Now we want to enter, once it's finished that, we want to enter our stimulus drawing phase. So we want to do another while loop. So while the current time is less than this pre-duration seconds plus the stim duration seconds because this um, the time is continually keeping track so once it's finished here it's going to be say 505 milliseconds so now we want to keep going until it's 500 plus 500 milliseconds and now while we're in, while we're within this loop we want to draw the grading Flip the window. Okay. So now we've finished our um, stimulus drawing period. So one one tricky thing is that once we've finished it, we've drawn we've still drawn a grading. We've still flipped a window. So once we've exited this loop, the grading will still be shown on the screen. So let's do another flip command which, because we haven't drawn anything, this will just change it back to a blank window. Now we want to wait for a response. So keys equals psychopy.event.wait keys. Now we want to implement this minimum inter-trial interval. So what we can do is just use another while loop. So while.clock.get time is less than minimum RTI, so once less than two, just flip the window. 
Okay, so let's think about what this one is doing. So say if, so this will be finished after one second. So 500 milliseconds of waiting, 500 milliseconds of the grating, and now we're ready for the participant response. So say if they respond immediately. So that means we'll get here when the time might be say, I don't know, 1.2 seconds. So then we'll, we'll keep waiting until the value gets larger than two. So this is a way that we can enforce this minimum inter-trial interval. On the other hand, so say if they took a little bit longer to respond. So now when we get um, out of here, it might be two and a half seconds. So now while two and a half is greater, is less than two, well that's not never true. So we never actually flip this. We just go back and start the next trial. So let's save it and run it. Okay, so now it's waiting for me to respond. I'll respond. Now it's up again, waiting for me to respond. Okay, so it's quite slow there. So now I want to show you is if I respond really quickly, how it sits there and, and waits before starting the next trial. Okay, so after the grading goes, I'm going to respond very quickly. See how it's sitting there? Now it starts. Whereas if I take a while to respond, um, it doesn't uh, do enforce that, that minimum duration. Okay, so going back to our objectives, so we wanted to have a look at uh, clocks. So we've seen how we can use them to track our time during program execution. We talked a little bit about this idea of a, a refresh rate and how what implications this has for how we draw dynamic stimuli. Particularly this idea that rather than basing our uh, dynamics off the clock, we can draw it based on the number of frames if we're confident about our monitor's refresh. And finally, we've looked at how we can structure our code to draw moving stimuli by setting this phase and how we can collect responses using this uh, wait, um, oh, sorry, get keys function. Okay, I'll see you in the next screencast.